So you've got a WMIM with a WRP. And you're thinking you might want a WMX with a WAR, but I'm gonna tell you, you definitely need a WMM no matter which option you choose. So, ladies and gentlemen, WTMFNV Part 6. A big part of role-playing games is stuff. You spend a lot of time doing stuff to get stuff. Acquiring stuff is a key component to a lot of role-playing games. In fact, you'll quite often end up getting player homes so you have a place to store all of your stuff. And it's stuff you're never gonna use, but you want anyway. We got more places than we've got stuff. We're gonna have to buy more stuff. And therefore, it should be no surprise whatsoever that some of the most popular mods for games like Fallout New Vegas are mods that give you more stuff. Mods like Weapons of the New Millennia that adds 45 new weapons. These weapons come with custom models, custom textures, and even custom sounds. And while some of these weapons are a tad on the powerful side, most of them actually fit the game really well, seem reasonably balanced, and are in general a lot of fun to use. Before we install Weapons of the New Millennia, of course, the first thing we do is check the mod page, read the description in detail, and check things like the requirements. And then we notice there are two, Weapon Animation Replacers and Weapon Animation Replacers Faux Mod. Now, in actual fact, Weapon Animation Replacers is required, but the second one isn't so much required as recommended because it's an easier way to install the first one. And if you're wondering what weapon animation replacer is, you're probably not. It is a mod that replaces the weapon animations. No surprise. I'll actually show you the sort of animations you can get once we get the installer set up because the installer does come with a, an interface that will actually give you examples of the animations. So let's get started with this. Go along to the file section and this is going to involve manual downloading. And the file you're going to need from the FOMOD page is the NMM version. Download that manually. And from the mod page itself, go along to the file section and download both files manually. The rifle animation pack and the pistol animation pack. Once the files are downloaded, open up the NMM version of the faux mod and drag and drop the folder you find in there called Weapon Animation Replacer Faux Mod onto your desktop. You can then open this by double clicking and dragging it out of the way a little so you can see what's inside. And if you want, you can delete the archive file you downloaded, but don't accidentally delete these. Then you can open the first of these files, the commando pack, using the archive program you have installed, and you will select the core animations and the optional stances, both of them, and drag and drop into the FOMOD folder. You can then close that, open up the professional pistol animation pack, and do the same. Core animations and optional stances, drag and drop. And when it asks if you want to replace the existing files, click do this for all current items and hit yes. You can then close this. Then back in the weapon animation replacer faux mod folder, select everything and right click and use the archive program you prefer to make an archive. I'm going to use 7-Zip, and I'm going to add to an archive called Weapon Animations Replacer Faux Mod 7-Z. It will take a few seconds to complete. I then open up Vortex, and I select just the archive that I created, 
and I drag it onto the drop file section of Vortex to add the mod to the mod section. And you can now close that folder and indeed delete it if you want to clean up along with the archives. You don't need them now. So now we just install it, click install, and it will open up a nice little installer. Now I am going to leave everything as core and you'll see why soon. But you can play around with this and see the options you actually have. These are the first person options for the assault rifles, same for the normal rifles, the pistols, etc. You get the idea, you get, you get some idea of what animations are available. And you can do the same for the third person animations as well. But again, as I said, I'm going to leave them as core for now. You can even uh, change the aimed pistol animation to a more of a gunslinger animation. I quite like this one, but I'm going to leave it at professional. I'm going to hit install, enable, and then I'm going to get some conflicts. And this is where it gets a little interesting. So let's take a look at which mods it's conflicting with. Click on the red lightning icon by Weapon Animation Replacer Foe Mod, and we can see it's conflicting with Weapon Mesh Improvement Mod. 35 files. Now, the conflicts involved are due to the first person aiming animations, the iron sights animation. One of the problems the vanilla game has is the iron sights are not quite aligned correctly. It's quite difficult to see unless you force the crosshair to stay up whilst you're aiming. But if you do, you can see a slight discrepancy. It's a very small difference with pistols or, you know, weapons that don't zoom in very far. But if you check it out on something like the hunting rifle, you can see the iron sights are not quite pointing to the center of the screen, to the crosshair. They're not pointing where the bullet will fly. Now this isn't a problem with sniper scopes, it's only a problem with iron sights aiming. And Weapon Mesh Improvement Mod fixes that, which is great. However, weapons of the new millennium don't have that problem, and so if it uses the same animations as Weapon Mesh Improvement Mod, it will actually knock the iron sights off for its weapons, which is obviously not good. So we have to decide which of these mods is going to win. If we load Weapon Animation Replacer before Weapon Mesh Improvement Mod, you will keep all of the fixes to the vanilla weapons. The vanilla weapons will all aim perfectly on iron sights, but you will have a slight problem when iron sighting with weapons of the new millennium. If we load after, obviously the opposite is true. Uh, don't worry if you decide to load it after Weapon Mesh Improvement Mod. Although you will lose the Weapon Mesh Improvement Mod's iron sight fixes, there are plenty of other things that that mod fixes with the model, so it's still worth using. So which should you pick? I mean, Vortex is suggesting before, and I'm going to concur. I'm going to say loading before is probably what you want to do, and my reasoning is pretty simple. This problem is far more noticeable on long-range, single-shot weapons because those are the weapons you will see the difference in aim far more. At least weapons that don't get used with a scope. As I've mentioned, this is not a problem with scoped weapons anyway. It's purely about iron sights. And there are way more weapons in the vanilla game that fit that description. Things like the hunting rifle, the cowboy repeater, etc. So with the vanilla weapons, you are going to notice the problem a lot more than the weapons of the new millennium. So that's why I'm going to load it before. But there are two exceptions to that where I would suggest you load it after. The exception number one is if you are predominantly going to use weapons of the new millennia. If you've got two or three weapons from that mod that you just generally want to use all the time and you no have no interest in the vanilla weapons or at least not using iron sights on them, then you may as well go with the weapon animation replacer loading after. The second exception is if you plan on using the non-core animations from weapon animation replacer, the cool looking cowboy animation sort of thing, because if you load it before, you will lose many of them 
and it will look very inconsistent. If, if you're going for those special animations, load it after. And then just remember, when you're using something like a hunting rifle in iron sights, it aims a little low and to the left. So, after all that, I'm going to load before, hit save, and deploy. And then, of course, before I carry on, it is worth checking out in-game just to make sure nothing has broken. Now, I realize I've just thrown a lot of information at you and we still don't actually have the weapon mod installed. However, this was very important information. You need to understand that replacing the animations is not just a cosmetic thing. It can actually affect gameplay where the weapon is actually aiming. Is it aiming where the bullet is going to fly? It also highlights the fact that unless there is a compatibility patch made between two mods, you may have to make some choices. You're going to need to understand the pros and cons of using two such mods together. And if you do decide to use them together, how it will affect your game depending on which order you load them in. Okay, let's actually install Weapons of the New Millennia now. Go along to the Nexus page. Again, assuming you've read through everything, you go to Files, and you're going to have to manually download this one. Once the file has downloaded, drag it onto the Drop File section to add it to Vortex, then Install. You will get a pop-up window appear. Click Next, and now you'll have to choose some options. The main mod will be installed no matter what you choose, but you have things, for example, like the Honest Hearts support patch. That's something you are almost certainly going to want if you're using Honest Hearts. But do you want a special Gunrunner's Quest? Do you want an alternate custom vendor, etc.? The two red options are the most important ones. The second one, Good Spring Supply Cabinet, Cheat Testing ESP, adds a crate into Good Springs between the inn and the store, and it contains absolutely every weapon and tons of ammo. It is a massive cheat. I do not recommend you use this unless you wish to test things. You will be robbing yourself of, well, much of the fun of getting this stuff. However, I do recommend you add it to the leveled list. Now, this is something you're going to hear fairly often. Mods adding their items to leveled lists. And you may be wondering what that is. Basically, this means the mod is going to add all of its items, in this case weapons, to various actors in the game. It could be vendors. It could be containers. It could even be enemies. So you may find these weapons on enemies. And in fact, as you can see here, he's added them to stores and to enemies. I'm not sure if they appear in any random containers, but they might. That is what leveled lists are. I could actually talk a lot more about this subject, but it's a bit out of scope for this series. So I'm going to leave it there. If you ever see a mod ask you, do you want to add these items to leveled lists? That is what it's asking you, and you probably do. If you want the items to appear in-game naturally without requiring a cheat or anything like that, you do. Hit Next, hit Done, and let it do its thing. Then click Enable, and because it's got multiple plugins, if you've selected any of the extras, hit Enable All, and immediately you can see I have got a conflict. If I go along to the red lightning icon, it's conflicting with two different mods. It's conflicting with the Weapon Retexture Project, which is actually by the same author, one file, and Vortex is suggesting you load after. I would suggest you do so too. And it's conflicting with the weapon animation replacer we've just installed. I would recommend loading this after. Hit save. It should automatically deploy and you're done. Go in game and see if you can uh, see the weapons. And that's it. The mod is now installed. On a related note, there are mods such as Weapon Mods Expanded that expand the available mods you can attach to the vanilla weapons. Basically, this mod allows you to add 
three mods to every single vanilla weapon in the game. That's great, but unfortunately it does conflict a little with the weapon mesh improvement mod. And if you also want to use the weapon retexture project to make the vanilla weapons look nicer, the conflicts get worse, to the point where I would not recommend using weapon mods expanded with weapon retexture project and weapon mesh improvement. However, if you really do want to use weapon mods expanded and you do want the weapons to look nicer to have the textures from the retexture project, it is actually possible to do that even though I've just told you they conflict with each other. And that's because on the weapon retexture project, if you go to the file section, there is an old file at the bottom still available and this is a version of the retexture project that does not use the weapon mesh improvement mod and it is compatible with weapon mods expanded if you use a compatibility patch that you can find on that page. So I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing to do is to disable the weapon retexture project hotfix and main file and the weapon mesh improvement mod. You can also uninstall them, but it's enough to disable them actually. Then go to the file section of the weapon retexture project, go to the bottom, find the old file and mod manager download. Once it's downloaded, I can hit install and while it's installing, I'm gonna draw your attention to the version. You can see the version that I did have installed was 2.17 and it's disabled. The new file, Weapon Retexture Project, is version 1.95. This is how you can keep track of what you're actually running in game, even if you keep several versions of a mod in Vortex. I'm going to enable it and it's going to conflict almost certainly, yes, with the unofficial patch. Load this after, hit save, then hit deploy, and you definitely want to go in game and just double check that the textures are working before you continue. And in game I can see the improved textures, I'll just check another weapon to make sure. Yep, yeah, it seems Weapon Retexture Project has been installed correctly. So now I'm going to install Weapon Mods Expanded. So once again, go to Nexus, read the page, check the requirements, and go to the file section, download the main file. Mod Manager download. There are a few other files we're also going to want. For example, if you're using the DLC, you're going to want WMX DLC, and again, Mod Manager download. And because I'm using Weapon Retexture Project, I'm going to want this compatibility file, which as you can see is flagged for version 1.95 of that mod. Hit Mod Manager Download and it will start downloading. Once downloaded, the first thing we're going to want to do is install the main file, Weapon Mods Expanded, and of course enable it once done. I immediately get conflict, so I go to Weapon Mods Expanded, click on the red lightning icon, and it's conflicting with the Animation Replacer mod and Weapons of the New Millennia. For Weapon Animation Replacer, you're going to want to load Weapon Mods Expanded before, because that way you will keep any of the new cool animations you've chosen from that mod. For Weapons of the New Millennia, it's got a few animations I would actually load before, same as Vortex is suggesting, if you are using that mod. Hit save and then deploy. And of course, before we continue, just go in game and make sure everything is working. And I get in game without any problems and I can immediately see this mod is now adding a bunch of notes to my inventory. I can go along and check those notes out in the data section. It's well worth reading all the data given to you by the mod author. Essentially, it will tell you which mods you can now apply to which weapons. Next, I'm going to install the DLC patches. This will actually give me a pop-up menu and ask me for certain choices. If you've got 
all of the DLC, just select the bottom option. If you have individual ones, you will uh, select this one and then go on to choose the individual plugins. I'm going to select all of them merged. This reduces the number of ESPs. If you have things like the caravan pack, the pre-order packs, and many of you will, in fact, you'll probably have all of them. If you've only got one or two, again, click this one and select the individual plugins. But if like me, you've got all of them, just select the merged one. It's much easier. Hit final steps and then hit finish. Hit enable, enable all because there's uh, more than one plugin. And this time I get no conflict. So I'm just gonna go straight in game and once again, make sure nothing has broken. And finally, the weaponry texture project compatibility patch. Let's install that. This time, once I enable it, we will get some conflicts. Go along to the patch itself, click on the red lightning icon, and it's conflicting with Weapon Retexture Project, no surprise, Weapon Mods Expanded, still no surprise, and the Weapon Mods Expanded DLC we've just installed. Once again, no surprise at all. You want to load after all of those. Hit save, deploy, and you're pretty much done. You now have Weapon Mods Expanded and the Retexture Project. Just once again, go in game, make sure nothing went wrong. Now at this point you might be thinking, but I like the vanilla weapons and I want to be able to add more mods to them, but I also want them to point where they're supposed to point. I, I don't know which mod I should use. Should I use Weapon Mods Expanded or should I use Weapon Mesh Improvement Mod? And the answer is, you're gonna have to decide that. It's really going to come down to what is more important to you. Having three mods on every single vanilla weapon or having your weapon aim where you need it to. That is a choice you have to make and I'm afraid it is a choice that's going to come up a number of times when you're modding games like this. And before we go, one mod I would recommend all of you look into is a mod called the Weapon Mod Menu. It's by the creator of the Mod Configuration Menu and it is an excellent little tool that lets you mod and remove mods from your weapons. Even if you've not decided to use WMX and you're just sticking with the vanilla mods, this mod is very, very useful. It's just, it's a lot nicer menu and the fact that you can remove the mods after you've put them on it just, it really is, it makes a world of difference. This is one of those mods I would put on my essential list, well worth installing. Installing this mod is very easy indeed. Go along to the mod page, go to the file section, and unfortunately it is a manual download, but once it's downloaded, just drag it from wherever you downloaded it to, to the drop file section to add it to Vortex install it, you'll get a little menu telling you it's detected your uh, menu file. In this case, for me, I'm using the Danified UI. Hit install, enable, and there are mod conflicts, so go along to the red lightning icon, and it's conflicting with the Danified UI. It's the inventory menu, right. So, I am going to load this after, as suggested, Hit save, deploy, and of course, go in game and check it out. Once in game, I choose a weapon, I press X to mod, and I now get this menu. I'm going to remove the long tube. I'm just going to remove it. It's now gone. I've got an available space, and I can, again, put it on if I want. Take it on and off as often as I like. It's as simple as that. It's very convenient. It's very user-friendly. And uh, to be honest, I could not imagine living without it. Now, weapon mods are not the only equipment mods you can find for Fallout New Vegas. You've got armor mods such as Adam, a definitive armor mod. You've got mods that add 
backpacks, such as Black Wolf's backpacks for New Vegas. You've got thermal vision, night vision, and there are even mods that will add trap detectors for you. But I can tell you that those mods are a lot easier to install than some of the mods I've shown you in this video. In fact, they're trivially easy, and you know how to do it now. So, you know what? Go out, find some mods that really appeal to you, and just have some fun with them. And once you're done, you can join me for the next and indeed the last video in this series. And that video is going to be a little less technical in nature because I'm going to be discussing mods that add new places to go, new people to meet, and new adventures to have. And of course, I would love it if you could join me for that video. So, I look forward to seeing you there, and until then, remember as always, have fun. That song ain't so very far from wrong